Good Resurrection Sunday morning. You're watching Do the Right Thing on the Bell Global Network. My name is Prophet William Thornton, and we can be seen each and every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on the Bell Global Network. You can also Google and YouTube BGNTVGospel.com. And also, again, we can be seen on Channel 20 Cable, Channel 20, that is Comcast. Uh, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm very grateful this morning to come before you with a word from the Lord. We are celebrating Resurrection uh, Sunday, and I'm glad that the Lord Jesus Christ gave his life on our behalf today. We can give him praise, glory, and honor for that. Um, I would like to start with a subject that the Lord gave me, uh, uh, and it's kind of different than the average uh, Easter uh, resurrection message, but it is a resurrection message. It is called seeing and believing. Seeing and believing. I would like to start by three categories and three events that happened on that uh, weekend of the, uh, the, the, the weekend that Jesus gave his life on our behalf. It was the death of Jesus, the burial of Jesus, and I want to touch especially on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I will be coming out of the King James Version, beginning in Matthew chapter 27, verse 45. First, I would like to open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, I come before your throne of grace this morning, bringing before you, Almighty God, the people of God. I ask, Heavenly Father, that even as you get the glory out of this message, that you bless your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who are watching and listening by their, their iPhone or their iPad or on their computer, Lord, I pray, God, that you send an anointing through the airways that will just bless their hearts and that they will receive revelation and knowledge of what you've given me to speak this morning. And I pray especially, Almighty God, that someone who needs to be saved, that they be saved to Day in the name of Jesus Christ and all the services this morning that are going around the country, that are going around the world, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are praying for salvations in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Almighty God, for what you're doing, what you're about to do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we give you the glory and the praise and all the honor in Jesus' name. Bless your people, Lord. Bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. And I encourage you, uh, the, tell someone about uh, Do the Right Thing and, and, and tell a friend or a neighbor or a co-worker to chime in. Man, they will be blessed each and every Sunday morning. For we have other ministers who come on the first Sunday, the second Sunday, out of the third, and the fourth Sunday and the fifth Sunday. We have ministers coming on and prophets coming on, speaking the word of God only. Again, we start in Matthew chapter uh, 27, verse 45, out of the King James Version. I will be reading verse 45 to verse 46. And from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And verse 46, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And in verse 50, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yield up the ghost. That's a powerful scripture within itself. Jesus had already been crucified. He was crucified between two thieves. One thief railed at him and complained and, and said, if you be the Christ, why don't you save yourself and us? But the other thief, God help him, thank God, he had sense enough to know that, Lord, remember me when I get to paradise. And he kind of got on the other thief's uh, case saying, well, why, why are you going there? We belong here. We deserve to be crucified. But this man hasn't. And Jesus looked over at the other thief that said, remember me? And he says, you will be with me today in paradise. Jesus was even saving souls and his dying breath on the cross. Here he gave up the ghost. He gave up his spirit. I'm reading something that is very powerful. He could not die till the Holy Spirit gave him permission to die. 
That's very important because we who are filled with the Holy Spirit, he is our counselor, he is our guide, and he has rule over us in the spirit realm, and we are to follow him and go where he sends us. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I thank God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I thank God for the keeping power of the Holy Spirit. But Jesus gave his life for us. He took my place. He took your place. And all of our sins. So can you imagine uh, uh, Jesus being in relationship with God every day. Having fellowship with his father every day of his life. And then he took on all of our inexpensies, our, 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 our wine drinking, our beer drinking, uh, running the streets, all of our fan, uh, fan, uh, uh, blaspheming and, and, and cursing and, and all the backsliding, all of our sins. He took on the cross that faithful day and he bore them. He took our place on the cross. And he died for you and me. And what happened here is that fellowship was broken because of our sin. And it was agony to Jesus and it was agony to the Father. Because God could not look at our sin. He, he couldn't look upon it. He had to turn away from it. And that's why Jesus said, why have thou forsaken me? Because fellowship was broken. That was the sacrifice that God gave in our behalf by sending his only son. I'm, I'm, I'm remembering, I was a military, I was in the military, and I was in the honor guard, and uh, there's a, a cemetery in Washington, D.C. called Arlington National Cemetery. It is really a garden of stones, graves of those who sacrificed their lives for the country, for the United States, the military, the Army, the Navy, the Marines, the Air Force, all the branches, they are buried there in this garden of stone. Their names are on the, the, the headstones. And, and it's not just significant that there's a, a name of someone who died, but there's really a name, the names of someone who once lived. And they gave their all, just like Jesus gave his all for us. That takes me to the next event, which is the burial of Jesus. I'll be reading Matthew 27, beginning at verse 57, and I'll be reading to verse 66. Matthew 27, 57 to verse 66. When the evening was come, there came a rich man, Armithia, named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in clean linen cloth and laid it in his own tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre and departed. Verse 61 And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over the sepulchre. Now the next day that followed the day of preparation the chief priests and Pharisees came together to Pilate saying Sir, we remember that the deceiver said Hmm. While he was yet alive, after three days, I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, so that later error shall be worse than the first. Verse 65, Pilate said unto them, You have a watch. Go your way, make it your sure as ye can. So they went and made the sepulchre, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Now the guards that were there guarding the tomb 
it was very interesting that they wanted to nullify the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And by sitting guards over, they thought that they had it all secure, that no one would dare come and steal away the body of Jesus Christ because now we have men watching and there's, a, a, there's always a relief. There's always another guard platoon coming in to watch. Very interesting because God in verse 1 of chapter 28 sends an angel from heaven. And guess what? The angel appears to the guards and it frightened them so that they ran away. The angel rolls the stone away. And I want to start at verse 2, a chapter 28, verse 1 and 2. At the end of the Sabbath, which is held from Friday evening to Saturday evening, which is celebrated by the Jews, but on our Sunday morning, at the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, and an angel from the Lord sent from heaven came and rolled the stone away. By that time, Christ had already risen. A lot of individuals think that maybe the stone was removed so Christ could come out, but Christ was already gone because he was in his glorified body. The Bible says, after he rolled the stone away, he sat on it. Now, that's powerful right there. i never seen that. But I want to bring something to your attention. The average weight of a stone was one to three tons, which is 2,000 to 4,000 pounds. The angel wasn't tired because he was larger. He wasn't tired because he sat on the stone. The reason he sat on the stone was to show triumph, to show that there was victory. Death, where's your sting? Grave, where's your victory? That's what this is saying. God had received victory. Glory and honor. Jesus Christ had received victory. Glory and honor. And when the stone was rolled away, there was no one in the tomb. For Jesus had already risen. He had left the stone. Oh my God. He had already got up and walked away. In his glorified body, he was not restricted. In the English version translation of John chapter 20 verse 19, the first day of the week, the disciples had gathered together behind locked doors of the place. In the New Living Bible, they had locked all the doors. And in the Message Bible, they locked the doors in a house. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there. Jesus had walked through the door because he was in a glorified body. So he walked through that stone. He walked through the rocks because, see, Jesus was in a new body. Just like one day, we're going to be in a new body. The rapture, when it comes, we're going to be in a glorified body. Even the dead in Christ that arises first will be in a new body. That's a promise. Thank you, Jesus. I would like to say something in regards to that. The Pharisees and Sadducees thought that they could hide the effect of Jesus' resurrection. And they tried every demonic way, every scheme. But I'm going to encourage someone who's listening and watching this telecast. Don't you know nothing can stop God? If God says that he's going to do something, no matter how impossible, I don't know who I'm talking to, no matter how impossible it seems, God's going to do it. And I'm a living witness. God is a God of his word. Amen. Matter of fact, he's not a God that he should lie, a man that he should repent. In Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 28, verse 3 and 6 reads on this wise. The continence was like the lightning. The angel that, that, that the, 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 the soldier saw, his continence was like the lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for the fear of him, the keepers, the guards, they shook and they ran away. And the angel answered and said unto the women when they came, Do not fear, for I know that you see Jesus, which was crucified. And in verse 6, he is not here, for he is risen as he said he would. 
Jesus had previously told them in Matthew 16, 21, for he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. He said he was going to be raised from the dead, and he did. God raised Jesus from the dead. Just like Lazarus in the book of John 11. Jesus went to the tomb of Lazarus. And this is remarkable. He asked the men to roll the stone away. After Lazarus had been there four days, his sister said, he, by now he's stinking. One of the things in the customs back then was that if you was dead over three days, you was really classified legally as dead. That's why Jesus held back for four days to show them a miracle. And as they rolled the stone away, Lazarus, Jesus said, come forth. Now, if Jesus had a mention, not mentioned his name, Lazarus, every dead body in that cemetery, in that garden of stone, would have risen from the dead. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus, come hopping out of the, the tomb with grave clothes on. And Jesus said something remarkable. He said, remove and loose and let him go. And as they took off the grave clothes, Lazarus came forth. Here is remarkable because I'm going to talk about the grave clothes and what the resurrection did that's different from Lazarus. The resurrection of Jesus is one of the central truths of the gospel. The resurrection of Jesus, it proves that he is the son of God. It guarantees the efficiency of his redemption. It verifies the truth of scripture and it is foundation of the gifts of the Holy Ghost. It assures us of a future heavenly inheritance. And it makes available the presence of God. And it nullifies sin. Galatians 2.20 For I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me. And gave himself for me. The raising of Lazarus was pre-showing the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But I'm going to show you the difference in that resurrection. For in verse 7, chapter 28 of Matthew, the angel told him to go quickly and tell the disciples he is risen from the dead. And in John 23 and 8, the Bible says that Peter and John ran to the grave site. But John outran Peter. And when John got to the grave site, he peeped in and, and he didn't go. He just peeped in and he saw grave clothes. But Peter went inside. And while he went inside, he, this is what he saw. He saw strips of linen was lying there as well as the burial clothes that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separated from the linen. When Lazarus came forth, he was wearing his grave clothes. But when Jesus arose from the dead, he left the grave clothes in the tomb. My God. Very interesting. Very interesting. Peter saw the grave clothes in a unique position. How they were folded and how they were laid. Verse 8 of chapter 20. Says finally. The disciples John. Who reached the tomb first. Went inside. And then he also. Saw the grave clothes. And how they were laid out. But the difference here. Scripture says that he saw. And he believed. He saw and he believed. There are some things going on in the lives of some individuals today that, that, that are uh, watching this program. And, and it's almost as if you need a revelation and you need a sign to, heal, to, 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 to build up your faith of what you're going through. Because sometimes we get to a place in our faith and, and believing for so long for something to transpire and we're asking God for it and we haven't the answer yet. God, I prophesy 
is going to give you a sign. He's going to show you something, just like he did here in the resurrection. He's going to show you something, and you're going to see it, and it's going to encourage your faith, and you're going to believe. I don't know who I'm talking to. I believe I, I see a woman, uh, a woman believing something for her child, and, and, you, and you need a sign to show that what you've been praying for that child is going to come to pass. God is going to show you something. You're going to see it. Hallelujah. And you're going to believe it. Someone is believing for a job. They believe in God for a new job, matter of fact. You believe in God for not only a new job, but an increase in, 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 in income. God is going to lead you and show you the job that's going to make you happy. It's going to place you in a position where you can get promotion and fringe benefits. That's including vacation pay. It's not going to be a lot of mess on the job either. Like the job you're on now. It's a whole lot of mess going on you, and you're unhappy. God's going to give you a job that's going to make you happy. And you've been looking in the paper. You've been going online looking for this job. He's going to show it to you. And then your faith is going to shoot sky high. Then you're going to believe again. You're going to believe again. John saw. And he believed. Listen. The angel didn't roll the stone away. So that Jesus could get out. Like I said before, he was in a glorified body. He could walk through walls. He could walk through rocks. No. He rolled the stone away, beloved, so that we can go in. So that we can witness the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Lord have mercy. We can, we can go in and with faith and, and, and pray to God and ask him and believe that he's going to do it. Because we know that he's still alive. He's alive even in us. See, something about the resurrection I want to relate to us, if you don't mind. When Jesus resurrected from the dead, the Bible says we are risen with Christ. Are we really? We can become a resurrected life for someone else. When someone sees our resurrected life, how we change from where we and who we were to who we and what we are now, it shows and witnesses to them that something happened and we can give them Jesus. The same Jesus that was resurrected from the dead, we also have been resurrected from the dead. You know, the, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. We were like the movies that walk around, all them zombies, they walk around, they're living dead. We were just acting out. But God gave us true life, living life, breathing to us new life when we became saved and born again. And we are resurrected life for someone else. Listen, beloved, many of people that I've met over the years, I've been saved since 1982. And I, I bumped into him in the in the mall in the store. I, uh, I was at a, a a function one time, and 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 I was di I did prison ministry. And one of the inmates who was released has his own business. He had catered the function. He came to me, and we shook hands and and embraced. And he said something to me that blew my mind. I hear you, Lord. He said, "You don't know it, but." When you was in the prison ministering to us guys, out of that ministry, out of that 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 section of, of inmates that came and I ministered to, 30 ministries started. Them boys got released, and all of them got churches around the country. Resurrected lives. 30 ministries started. I went and visit one up in Lansing. The brother's powerful too. Got a beautiful church. And it's growing. He's anointed. And he embraced me when he saw me when I came in the sanctuary. He cried because he remembered. And it's good to remember where you came from. 
My God, I don't know where that, that, just remember where you came from, how you started. Do not despise small beginnings. My God in heaven. I would like to continue. John 11, 25, 26 says, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me shall never die, but have eternal life. My God. I recently saw something that really blows my mind. It says that the only way out, there was some, some uh, uh, they were fighting a forest fire, and they were trapped and didn't know it, and a mysterious airplane came over them and began to drop letters to them. And when the fireman picked it up, it guided them out of their trapped position in the forest fire. They didn't hesitate to believe that they had a way of escape. And that's how Christ is. Christ gave us a way of escape on the cross. Remember, Jesus died for you, and he died for me. Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that someone will be saved today, that someone believe that you are the living Savior, that they will confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that you was raised from the dead that they will confess and believe today, Lord, that Jesus is Lord. I leave you with this. Be saved. Be set free. Love the Lord. Serve him with all of your heart. In Jesus' name, do the right thing. God bless you. Everybody, this is your girl Vicky Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie, watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine, AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times. And you are watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network.